Howdy gang and welcome to your fifth and final WebSockets tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about broadcasting messages. Okay, so here's this picture again, which you're probably getting sick of by now, but I'm going to use it to demonstrate how we can broadcast messages and how that is completely different to what we've been doing so far when we've been sending messages out from the server. So, in the last tutorial, we emitted a message from the client when we clicked the send button. That message sent some data to the server, which in turn listened out for it, then emitted a message back to every single client, including the original client which sent that message in the first place. So, that's what we did last time. In this tutorial, we're going to use broadcasting, and the difference is, if we were to emit a message from the client to the server, the server listens to it. If the server then broadcasts a message, then what it does is send the message down every WebSocket to every client except the original one, the one that sent it the message in the first place. So that's the difference between what we've been doing and broadcasting messages. So if you remember back to the first tutorial when I showed you this chat in its full glory, then if I added some kind of handle here, let's say Luigi, and if I started typing a message, on the other chat windows, what we'd see is Luigi is typing a message. Luigi is typing a message, but it wouldn't show on this one originally because we're broadcasting that message. And it makes sense because if I'm typing a message in this window, I don't need to see Luigi is typing a message. Only on every other single client does it need to show. So that's broadcasting a message. And that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. So the first thing I want to do is head to the index.html file and I want to add an area where this message is going to get output onto the screen. So I'm going to create a div underneath output and this is going to have an ID equal to feedback instead. Okay, so in this feedback div is where that little message Luigi is typing a message is going to go. So the next thing we want to do is grab a hold of this thing okay in the chat.js so we can use it later when we're outputting that message so what i'm going to do is just come down here i'm going to delete that semicolon add a comma then i'm going to say feedback is equal to document dot get elements by id so it's this fourth option or fifth and then we want the id feedback which is that div we just, uh, just created okay so now we've got a hold of that and we can output it later the next thing i want to do is attach an event listener to this thing right here, this input field, which is the message, because the event that I want to listen for is when we're typing, which is a key press event. So we're going to listen for that key press event. And when that event occurs, then we're going to emit a message to the server, which in turn can broadcast that message to the rest of the clients, but not this one. Make sense? So we're going to listen for that key press event on this input field right here. Now that input field, we already have a handle to it. And it's this message variable right here. So what we can do is underneath this event listener, add another one. This time it's on the message field. Then we add event listener and the listener. What we're listening for is a key press event. OK, then when that happens, we can fire a callback function. And inside this function, we want to emit an event or a message to the server. Make sense. So let us again say socket dot emit, just like we did up here before. And the message we want to send this time is a typing message. So we're saying to the server, someone's typing. OK, so we also want to send some data. And the data we want to send this time is the name of the person typing or the handle, because we're going to display that on the other chat windows. Luigi is typing a message. Peach is typing a message, etc. So we can send the name by grabbing onto this handle right here and then sending the value of that input field. OK, so now we're sending this data up to the server. So now we want to react to it in the server and we want to broadcast that message to the rest of the clients. So let's go to the index.js file, which is running on the server. And inside this connection function right here, what we're going to do is create another listener. So we're going to say socket dot on. Right. So we're listening for a particular message. And this time it's the typing message, which we just created in the front end. And we're going to use a callback function, which takes the data, which in this case is the username or the handle. Right. OK, so now what we want to do is not io.sockets.emit, but what we want to do is broadcast this message to every other single socket or client. Right. So how do we do that? Well, we can say socket. 
So that refers to the individual socket, the one that sent us the message, right? So we're saying socket dot broadcast, right? We're broadcasting a message, then dot emit. So now we're emitting it, all right? So this is gonna emit it to every other single client, but not this original one. Make sense? So what we're gonna emit? We're gonna emit the typing message, and we're also gonna send the data back, right? Which is the username or the handle. So now we've emitted it or broadcasted it from the server on the front end in every other single client. We want to handle that. We want to listen out for that message and handle it. So let's go under here where we say listen for events and we'll add it in. So we'll say socket, which is this one instance of the WebSocket in that particular client, dot on, and we're listening for the typing message. Okay, and when we get that, we're going to fire a callback function, which is going to take the data, the user handle that is, and then inside here we can do something. We can output this user handle to the browser. So remember before we created this thing right here, this variable feedback, which gave us a handle or a hold of this div right here. Okay, so we can say now down here feedback dot inner HTML. And what we're going to do is set that equal to a message, right? So it's going to be a string. And this is going to be a P tag, then EM. That's going to slant it for us. Oh, by the way, don't do this in capitals. <laughs> All right, so EM. And then what we want to do is output the data, which is the username or the handle. So we'll say plus data. Then tack on the rest of the string, which is going to be is typing a message. Dot, dot, dot. All right, then we'll close off the EM and we'll also close off the p tag. So now what we're doing is outputting this HTML and we're concatenating this data, which is the username or the handle to that string, that HTML string, then we're setting it to the inner HTML of the feedback div, right? So that's gonna happen when we type in some data. So let us now just quickly go to this thing over here. In fact, let's just uh, minimize this completely. And if I refresh in each one, type in a name, Luigi, and then type in a message. Now we can see in these other two, we get that Luigi is typing a message. Woohoo, we have successfully broadcasted a message, okay? Now, there's one more thing I wanna do because if I complete this message and say send, then this thing right here still says Luigi is typing a message. And really, we wanna sort that out, okay? So how do we sort that out? Well, let's just look at this code. Now, when we click send, that's when we want that message to go. Luigi's typing a message because now we've typed the message and we've sent it. So what we can do is when we're listening for this chat event that occurs after we've clicked send, what we can do is then set the inner HTML of the feedback to equal an empty string. Okay, makes sense. So that now is going to equal an empty string like so. All right. So if I save this now and if we view it in these browsers, I'm just going to refresh over here and if we say Luigi is here um, if we can spell it okay Luigi and then Mario and then Peach and in here I'll say hey Mario and then click send and we can see this Luigi is typing a message then Mario says hey Luigi and by the way you can see Mario is typing a message in both of these and dot 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 have you seen Peach and then Peach is going to reply and say, Boris, I'm right here. Okay, cool. So now we see Peach is typing a message, click send, and voila. So there we go, guys. We now have our fully functioning chat application using WebSockets. So like I said, you can do many more things with WebSockets, not just create chat rooms. So I implore you to dive deeper. So there we go, WebSockets 101. I hope this has been of some use to you. If you do enjoy the videos, please like, share and subscribe and I'm gonna see you in the very next series.